Hi guys. So this lesson is going to cover section 121. Um, I know I say that you don't have the book, but um, it is coming out of section 121 out of the book. Um, remember the notes and the homework, everything can be found on that calendar that I gave you. It's all hyperlinked to the Google Drive folder. Um, so everything can be found in that Google Drive folder as well. Okay. Um, you will need a calculator, so get your calculator out or pause this and go get a calculator. Remember that you must watch the entire video of this. I need to see that 100% of the video is watched in order for completion. Um, most of you guys are doing a great job, but obviously just make sure you're keeping up with that, okay? Um, yeah, so let's see. Um, so this section was your homework from the uh, last week. This was talking about like bias and unbiased. There wasn't too many questions about it in the um, homework, uh, but that was probably like the most important part of this. So I will make sure that we revisit the idea of a bias versus a non-bias question. Okay. Okay. Um, this is the warm up, um, and it just kind of starts us with some statistics and calculations since we haven't been doing too much. So let's just read through it. It says Mrs. Kittle teaches a class in composition and literature. She is conducting a portfolio review with her students, asking them to discuss some of the essays they've written over the past semester. Hannah submitted six essays this semester and received the following grades. Okay, um, And you can just assume that these are percentages or points out of 100. So 100% uh, or 100 points out of 100, 95, 90, 85, 80, 60. Notice that they go in order from uh, greatest to least. It says, Hannah has been asked to select two essays to discuss with Mrs. Kittle. How many possible combinations of two essays can be chosen from the six that Hannah had submitted? So in order to figure this out, um, listing them out is probably the easiest way. So if she's talking about two essays, she could pick 100 and she could pick 95. She could pick 100 and she could pick 90. She could pick 100 and 85, uh, she could pick 180, she could pick 160. Okay, so notice all I did was I paired these two, then I paired these two, then I paired these two, then these two, and then these two. And I'm gonna continue doing that, but now instead of using the 100, I'm gonna use the 95. So I'm gonna say 95, I'm not gonna say 95 and 100, um, and nowhere in here it says order matters. So if I said 95, then I said comma 100, I'd be stating the exact same two as this. Okay. So I'm going to say 95, and then I'm going to go 90. She could pick 95 and 85. And then 95 and 80. 95 and 60. So at this point, I've used this as my first, and this is my first. Now I'm going to use 90 as my first. So I'm going to say 90. And then again, I can't say 90 and 100. Otherwise, I'd be stating this one. I can't say 90 and 95. Otherwise, I'd be stating this one. So I'm going to say 90 and 85. 90 and 80. And 90 and 60. And now I've stated these as my first. So now I'm going to do 85 and 80 and 85 and 60. That's now my first. So then I'll say 80 and 60. And then there is no 60 in anything else because it's been used with all of them. So I notice I have three and I have one, two, three, four, five rows. So five times three means that there's 15 ways or 15 combinations that she could pick two essays to discuss with Mrs. Kittle. Uh, what is the lowest possible average grade that Hannah can have in a sample of two essays? So her lowest possible would be having those two. So she took her 80% and her 60%. Um, and notice it says her lowest possible average grade. So that means if I'm adding up those two, I'm going to divide by two, um, which you can use your calculator for, but between 80 and 60 is 70. So what is the lowest possible average? It would be a 70%. Okay. Um, the next one says, what is the highest average? So instead of picking the lowest two, we could pick the top two. So that's where you'd say 100 plus 95, and again, divided by two. Um, in between 90 and 95 is 97.5%. It's a pretty big difference. So her lowest average could be a 70 or 
95 or 97.5 could be your highest. Uh, suppose that Hannah was asked to discuss four essays instead, so we're switching it to four. What is the lowest possible average that Hannah can have in a sample of four essays? So lowest possible if she has four just means that we would take all four of her lowest scores. So 90, 85, 80. So 90, 85, 80, and then her lowest score of 60. And then since we're adding up four, we're averaging those four. Um, just some notation if you remember from back in math one. If you're averaging, we used this as a, the notation, or rather the calculator did. Um, that X bar is your average. Um, so if I put 90 plus 85 plus 80 plus 60, um, if you put in your calculator like this, remember you cannot hit divided by four without parentheses. All it's doing is dividing the 60 by four. So since I don't have parentheses, I'm just gonna add those up and then I'm gonna divide by four giving us an average of 78.75%. Okay, again, you don't need this notation, but you should understand what it means. That means average or mean. Right here, this means mean average. Okay. Next one says, what is the highest possible average grade that Hannah can have in a sample of four essays? So now we're doing highest if she has four. So that means we would start with our 100. And we'd say 100, let's see, what were they? 95, 90, plus 95, plus 90, uh, plus 85. And again, since we're adding a four, we're gonna divide by four. This time I'm gonna put parentheses in my calculator. So 195, 90, and 85, and then divided by four. So her highest possible average could be a 92.5%. All right, moving on. So that was a warm up. That was just kind of to um, get us back to average because that is going to come up today. Okay. Um, do not feel like you need to write this down and actually don't write this down. It would be a waste of your time. I just want to kind of read through this so you understand some of the idea of statistics. Okay, and then feel free to pause too if you want to read it yourself. Um, it says in medicine, business, sports, science, and other fields, important decisions are based on statistical information drawn from samples. A sample is a subset of the population. The wise selection of samples often determine the success of those who use the information. Um, so this actually is very um, close to what's going on with um, statistics right now and everything that's going on with COVID. Um, obviously, the better sample that you get, um, better sample means like you don't want to pick one town and pick three people and that's your sample. You'd want to pick multiple towns and you'd want to pick hundreds of people or thousands of people. I mean, we're talking about people in the United States. You wouldn't want to pick hundreds. You want to pick thousands. Okay. Um, it is uh, it is possible that one sample is more reliable to predict an election um, or justify a new medical procedure, while other samples are simply not reliable. Some conclusions based on samples are sim oh, I'm sorry. Some conclusions based on statistical samples are little more than guesses, and some are reckless conclusions in life or death matters. In many cases, it all comes down to whether the sample selected is genuinely random, and that's the most important thing. Um, and that's kind of been talked about a little bit and it's going to be talked about more, but the idea that something is genuinely random is where you get your best results. So that's that idea that we don't say, okay, I'm going to pick every third house. Um, but instead, maybe out of these 20 houses, I'm going to assign all of them a number. I'm going to say house one, house two, house three. I'm going to put all those numbers into a bag and I'm going to pick. And I might end up with one, two, three, 17, 18, 19, something like that. Uh, but the fact that it's genuinely random and it's not a pattern. Um, is always going to give you your best results. Okay, so we have three big words that we're going to talk about today. Um, the first one is parameter. Uh, so somewhere you're going to want to find some blank space and you're going to want to write this down. Uh, parameter is a numerical value representing the data in a set. It's the purpose of the problem. So that's really important. Um, the parameter could be whatever the question is asking. So if the question was asking for the average, like the warm-up, then that would be the parameter. If the question was asking for what is the highest score, 
um, kind of like the warm up, then that would be the parameter. Okay. Um, pause this and write down what you need to, but this is, there's three important words that we're going to use. That's one of them. The next one is the population. Um, the population is all of the people, objects, or phenomena of, inter of, of interest in an investigation. Okay, so the population would be um, typically all possibilities, and it'll make more sense as we go through examples with these. Um, the last example is a sample, and a sample is just a subset of the population. Okay, so for instance, if we use the warm-up as an example, the parameter would have been answering all the questions. It would have been finding the average of her test scores, the highest or the lowest, whatever the question is. The population would have been all of that girl, uh, I think it was Hannah, all of that girl's test scores. A sample would be the five that we picked. So let's say that she took 20 tests in a year. The population would be all 20. The sample would be the six that were picked. I think there were six. Okay, and the purpose of today's notes is to go problem by problem and talk about what is the parameter, what is the population, what is the sample. So after all the examples, you should be pretty good with identifying these three things. Okay. All right. So example one says Adam rolled a six-sided die. So six-sided die is just a normal die. Um, he rolled it four times and obtained the following results. So he got a five, a five, a three, and a four. He computed the mean of the four rolls and used the result to estimate the mean of the population. Identify the parameter, the sample, and the statistic of interest in this calculation. Calculate the identified statistic. So then cal calculate that identified statistic. So notice we have a parameter, we have a sample. Um, nowhere in here does it say population, which is odd, but we, we will talk about that. Okay. The parameter is the statistic of interest. Okay, so the first question says identify the parameter in this situation. Okay, and again, the parameter is that statistic of interest. Um, it's it's calculating whatever the question was asking for. And in this case, it says identify, he computed the mean of the four uh, roles and used it to estimate the mean of the population. So it's talking about the mean of those roles. So the parameter is the mean of the four rules. So that's what we're trying to answer, or we're trying to answer for Adam, or Adam's trying to answer. Okay. Um, the sample in this situation is the four rules. Okay. The population, it doesn't ask us for this, but the population would just be all possible rules. Okay, again, we're not, so the idea of what the population is, it's everything, but you're obviously not going to continue rolling a dice forever. So the sample is just, you know, if I rolled it four times or eight times or 27 times, um, but the population is the bigger picture. It's all of the possible rolls. Okay. Um, the statistic of interest is, again, answering the parameter. So I would draw an arrow and I would say it's this right here. It's answering that question. What is the mean of the four rolls? Um, so identify, it just has to identify here. So it's just the mean, which again, we can use this notation of the four rolls. And then finally it says to actually calculate that statistic of mean. So he rolled a five, he rolled a five, he rolled a three and he rolled a four. Notice this looks just like what we did in the warm up. And then we're going to add all those up and divide by four. See here. Oops. All right, so this gives me 10 and 7 makes 17. So if I take 17 and I divide by 4, you get 4.25. And that's it. Okay, the other ones will be a little bit more in depth. Um, let's go through example two. So kind of wrote some things out here. It says high levels of blood glucose are a strong predictor for developing diabetes. Blood glucose is, a, is typically tested after fasting overnight, and the test result is called a fasting glucose level. 
a doctor wants to determine the percentage of his patients who have high glucose levels. So he wants to determine who has high glucose levels. Okay, and I'm actually going to highlight this so you can see a little bit better. He received the glucose test results for 25 patients to determine how many of them had a fasting glucose level greater than 100 um, milligrams per deciliter. He recorded each patient's fasting glucose level in the table as follows. Notice that there's one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. Five times five is where those 25 patients are coming from. Okay. So I wrote them out to the side over here, just showing that I'm going to identify each of these. Okay. Um, the question right here says to identify the population, the parameter, the sample, and the statistic of interest. Um, so what that means is you first want to identify what the population is, what the parameter is, what the sample is, and then the statistic of interest just means that you're actually calculating the parameter instead of just describing what it is, okay? Um, and then calculate the percent of patients in the sample with a fasting glucose level above 100. Okay, so the population, remember, think population means big. So the population would be all of the doctor's patients. Okay, so he picked 25, but the population would be all of his patients, because again, he's the one that's doing this, um, this study. So it wouldn't be all possible patients, it would be all of his possible patients. The sample is a subset of this, so instead of using all of the doctor's patients, he's using 25 patients. Okay, again, notice big picture, smaller subset. Okay, uh, you may want to make a note here that says subset. All right, and then the parameter, um, we don't want to actually calculate it, we just want to describe what it is. The parameter is the percent of patients. who have high glucose levels. Okay, so again, the parameter is just describing what he wants to, that he's doing this whole study to determine what percent of his patients have a high glucose level. Um, then it says that we actually do want to calculate that statistic of interest. That means that we're calculating the parameter, the, the point of this study. Okay, so I'm going to do that here. Okay, so anybody, it says in here, he reviewed the glucose levels of his 25 patients to determine how many of them had a fasting glucose level greater than 100. Okay, so that's what we're looking for is anything greater than 100. So I'm just going to highlight them in here. So there'd be one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's it. Okay, so then I'm going to say that there were seven that had greater than 100 out of the 25 that were in the, the sample subset. Okay, and then if you were to do seven divided by 25 in your calculator, you're going to get that's 28%. Okay, and again, this 28% is an estimate. It would be a good estimate. It didn't really say how he picked these 25 people. Um, so this would be a good estimate if he randomly picked 25 people. Um, a bad estimate if he just like said, I'm gonna pick all the people who showed up on a Monday, right? Because then you're picking how many people showed up on a Monday. So how accurate this is, we don't know because it doesn't describe how he picked them, but. Um, to answer his question, 28%. All right. So we'll try another one. <clears throat> this one says, data collected by the National uh, Climatic Data Center from 1971 to 2000 was used to determine the average total yearly precipitation. I'll highlight that. The average total yearly precipitation for each state. So all 50 states. 
The following table shows the mean yearly precipitation for a random sample of 10 states. Each state's ranking in relation to the rest of the states, where a ranking that's closer to one indicates a higher average mean yearly precipitation, use the sample data to estimate the total rainfall in all 50 states for the 30-year period from 1971 to 2000. Okay, so that's really important right there. It says, use the sample to estimate the total rainfall in all 50 states for the 30-year period. That's what we're trying to determine. That's the parameter, okay? Um, identify the population, the parameter, the sample, and the statistic of interest. Okay, and again, that parameter is the statistic of interest. All right, so the population is all 50 states. Okay, we don't want to just say all states. We want to be specific. There's 50 of them. So it's all 50 states. And again, um, if you guys are writing this out on a separate sheet of paper, make sure that you're labeling and identifying just like me. Um, if you're printing it out, then obviously you have room in the same places that I do. Okay. Um, this sample means a subset of those 50. In this case, they randomly picked 10. We don't know how they picked the 10, but they picked 10. The parameter is describing whatever statistic was described. Um, in this case, they want us to figure out the uh, total rainfall in all 50 states for, 30, for a 30 year period. So that's the parameter. So total rainfall in all 50 states for 30 years. It's a lot of rainfall. Okay, and they want us to do that using this, this average of 10. Okay, um, so now that we've identified all of those, we need to actually figure out this statistic of interest. Okay, um, so what we actually want to do first is we want to add all of these. So if we add these, and I'm just going to put plus signs in here. So we're adding up all of these numbers. And since there's 10 of them, we're going to take all of them, we're going to add them up, and we're going to divide by 10. Okay. Um, and make sure you do that too, just to make sure that I don't put one of these numbers in incorrectly. So let's see. All right, so I'm just going to write out what we got. So I just added them all up, and I got a total rainfall of 320.6 inches. Um, so that's the total rainfall. Okay, and there's a couple ways that I can do this. I'm going to show you two different ways. I can take this total amount of rainfall, and I can divide it by 10. And then that's going to tell me how much, on average, each state gets. So that tells me that each state gets about 32.06 inches of rain each year. So inches of rain each year. Okay. So if each state gets 32.06 inches of rain, I can take this 32.06. I can multiply it by 50 states. So this is the average for one state times 50 states. And this, remember, is only for one year. So I want to multiply this. Uh, I want to multiply this then by 30 so that I get it for a 30-year period. So I'm going to take 32.06. I'm going to multiply it by 50. So that's 50 states. Okay, And then I'm going to multiply it by 30 since it's for 30 years. And I'm going to get that there's about, obviously this is averaging, so we're estimating, it's about 48,090 inches of rain. Oh, that's a lot of rainfall. Okay. We could convert it to feet. We can convert it to yards if we wanted to. All right. So that's one way to do this. I could have actually done this with a lot less conversions. And I could have just taken my total rainfall from the beginning, and that was for 10 states, and multiply it by 5, because if that's for 10 states times 5, that makes 50 states. And then I would do it for a 30-year 
period of time and that would actually get me the exact same thing. Okay, we have one more example to do. Uh, this one says, for her math project, Stephanie wants to determine the mean and standard deviation. So the mean and standard deviation. Remember mean we use with this symbol. Standard deviation, you guys haven't, we haven't talked about it for a little bit, but you did talk about it a couple of years ago and at the beginning of this um, unit. That's standard deviation. Um, so she wants to estimate the mean and the standard deviation of the points scored by the home and away teams in the National Basketball Association, so NBA. She recently selects one home game and one away game for each of the 16 NBA teams during the 2012 season and records their scores in the table below. Okay. So I, uh, I just kind of section them off here because it goes home score and then it wraps around to this home score, and then away score wraps around to this away score. So notice that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So there's your 16 home, and then your 16 away. Okay. It says use a graphing calculator, or just a calculator, to estimate the mean and standard deviation of the points scored by the home and away teams in the NBA, identify the population, the parameters, the sample, and the statistic of interest. And again, once you identify what the parameter is and you do the calculation, that number is that statistic of interest. Okay. So the population, remember, think big. The population would be all NBA teams. So all NBA teams. And I don't know how many there are. It didn't say in the problem. Uh, but you could be very specific. If it said in the problem how many there were, I would say how many there are. Um, so all NBA teams, the sample would be just the 16. Uh, actually, let me see here. Okay, um, never mind. I just uh, looked it up. There's 30 basketball teams. So the population is all NBA teams. The sample is the 16 NBA teams that were selected. So 16 NBA teams. The parameter is identifying whatever the question is asking, which in this case is the mean and standard deviation of the points scored. So we're going to say mean of, and it's the mean of the home team, and it's the mean of the away team. And then we also want to calculate the standard deviation of the home team and of the away team. So this question actually has a lot that we need to calculate. Okay, again, the parameter is not the, st is not the statistic of interest. You will not have numbers in here. The parameter is just describing what the question is asking for. The statistic of interest is then calculating what the parameter is describing. Okay, uh, so what we need to do is we need to take these numbers and we need to find the average of them. And I'm going to show you how to put this in your calculator because standard deviation, um, the calculator can do force, so we might as well let it do it for us. Um, so I guess you do need a graphing calculator. If you hit your stat button right here and then you hit enter, you should have a blank list, one list, two list, three. If you don't, you can clear your calculator. So if you hit the second sign, plus sign, seven, one, two, feel free to rewind if you need to see that again, but second plus seven, one, two, it'll clear, um, which then means when I go to stat and I hit enter, those are all going to be cleared. Okay. Um, go ahead and put these numbers in your calculator, and all you have to do is hit 101, enter, 104, enter, but you're going to want to do this so that you can see how I calculate the mean and the um, uh, standard deviation. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Be careful when you put them in that you put the right numbers in. And remember, when you get to 87 here, we're going to then jump to that 106. Okay, and then notice that I can see that that's my 16th piece of data. 
Then I'm going to move on to my away score, which would be 109. And then once I get to that 94, I'm going to jump back over to the other side to put in 112. Okay, notice that they both have 16 pieces of data. All right, um, I'm going to hit my stat. Notice that my list one is my home score, my list two are my away. So I'm going to hit stat. I'm going to go over to calculate, and I wanted to calculate one variable statistic. You never want to hit two variable statistic. Um, even though we have two lists in here, that's not what two variable statistic means. So go ahead and hit enter. And if you hit enter again, it's automatically going to pick list one. If you have a newer calculator, it's going to give you um, a bunch of questions there. Leave it as list one. Okay. Notice that this first thing right here is your X bar. That's the average. So we're going to say home team and away team. So the home team has an average score of about 102.06 points. We're going to round it two decimal places. Okay. Um, the standard deviation is this button right here above the n equals 16. That 16 means that you've entered in 16 data points. Um, but right up above that, this one right here is 10.83. Um, and you can put points here too. Okay. Standard deviation, remember, just means how far on average the values are from the mean. So that means if the average is 102, on average, all of them are about 10.83 points from this, meaning either lower or higher. All right. Now, to get my away team, I'm going to hit stat again, and I'm going to go over to calculate, but I need to change what list I'm using. Oops, I'm going to clear this. So I'm going to go to stat, calculate. Um, in this older calculator, I just need to tell it list two. Um, in the newer calculators, you should see something in here that says list one. We just need to change it to list two, so you're going to have to go scroll over that. List two, if you hit second and the two button, it'll enter in list two. So now I'm telling it I want it to calculate it for list two. And then I can just go ahead and hit enter, and I'm going to get that my average is 97.94 points. So much lower average for the away versus the home. I'm going to get the standard deviation is 11.05. The bigger the standard deviation, it means the further it is from the average, which means it's less consistent. So I'm going to make a note here. You talked about that in Math 1. So less, um, oops, that's how I spell consistent. Sorry. Less consistent. So the away team is less consistent, okay? So because it's a bigger span of numbers from the mean. All right, and I think that's everything. Uh, we're not, oh, 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 sorry, two more problems. Um, I added these in because the book um, does them in the homework, and I didn't want you to not be able to do them. It says, and you don't need to write this down by any means, just write down the work that we're going to do. Um, it says only eight of the 50 states that Jeremy survey. Uh, surveyed reported that they watch a certain show on television, estimate the number of students at Jeremy's school that watch this show. If the school has a total of 720 students, assume that the survey was given um, to a representative sample. That just means that it was a good sample. It was random. Okay. Um, all this is looking for is for you to do something like this. It's to set up a proportion like you guys did last year in Math 2. So I would say 8 over 50. So 8 out of 50 students is equal to, notice that this is your total. So 8 students out of 50. Um, and then it says that there's 720 students at Jeremy's school. I want to know what, how many of them out of the 720 watch the show. So I would say x over 720 because, again, that's a total. Notice that my denominators both represent totals. Okay. So I would cross multiply here. If you remember cross multiplying last year. So 50 times x would give me 50x. And let's see if I did 8 times 720, 
I get 5760. So if I divide by 50, I get about, and I have a portion of a student, so we're going to get about 115 students. Okay, notice if I did this, if I did 8 divided by 50, I get 0.16. If I did 115 divided by 72, I'm going to get about the same because I rounded. All right. Um, next question. This would be actually a good one to try first on your own. Pause it, read it, see if you can set it up right. So I'm going to give you a second to pause it and do that. All right. The um, wording on this is flip-flopped a little bit. Um, I just want to make sure that we put numbers in the right place. Notice that there's three numbers, um, and a proportion has four, obviously, so the X has to be the fourth. So it says, in a wildlife study, 18 turtles in a lake were captured and released with tags. Later, 35 turtles were checked and 11 had tags. Use the results to estimate the number of turtles in the lake. Assume no turtles entered or left the region during the study. Okay, so here's what you would do. You would say... Um, right here, notice it says later 35 students were checked and 11 of them had tags. So that means that 11 had tags out of the 35 that were checked. So this is talking about tags out of the total 35 that were checked. So if we go back up here, it says in a wildlife study, 18 turtles in a lake were captured and released with tags. Okay, 18 of them had tags. So that would actually go here because... Notice tags was up here, so then tags would be up here. That means we don't know what that total is. So 18 were captured and have tags out of what total? Um, these can be flip-flopped. You could have said something like this and said x over 18 equals. Uh, but since this then represents tags, when I set up my next proportion, that 11 would actually go down here and the 35 would go up here because 11 of them had tags out of the total 35. And notice the question was asking for how many total. So total, total, tags, tags. Okay. Um, so in calculating this, when we cross multiply, so I'm going to show this, cross multiply like this. Notice it doesn't matter which one of these we use, because here we would do 11 and X, and here we're doing 11 and X. And here we did 18 and 35, and here we're also doing 18 and 35, which give us 630. And then we would divide by 11, and we can estimate that there's about 57 turtles in the lake. All right. Um, let me kind of show you what your homework is. We're not going to do this. Your homework is 1 to 1, numbers 1 through 10. That homework, again, can be found on the calendar. It's also in your Google Drive. The calendar just links you to it, okay? Um, in the book, you're going to have these types of questions, okay? All right, in the beginning, it's truly just asking you guys about the three things that we just talked about. That was the big objective. Um, let's see, statement, population. Um, would you use population? parameter, statistic, okay? Look at the uh, way the book answers. You just, some of this you might not know again, but read the, um, read what the answers are in the back of the book and that should give you an idea of what they're kind of looking for, okay? And then those problems have some um, proportions that we just did. And then that kind of looks like what we just, um, what we were talking about, population, parameter, and statistic of interest. All right. All right, great. Have a good one. We'll see you for the next lesson.